Welcome back, gang. It's Dalty from DaltiasGaming.com, and we are talking the Omega Templar. Now, I got a lot to tell you about what Templar has changed, some gear set options, skills, and then I want to spend a lot of time on the rotation, so how to actually play this build. So, here's what's new with the Templar Magic Base PvE DPS. So you can read the patch notes if you want to find out all the changes, but I want to talk about the, the most important for this specific build, and one in particular. Now, whether you use this skill or not, you need to understand its importance and how it game it changes the game. So this is the other morph of Repentance, and now it gives minor magic steal. So what you need to understand is that Elemental Drain and that skill that Templar runs can both do the same effect. Elemental Drain gives uh, spell resistance, but it's one target, where Radiant uh, Aura is everything in a huge distance, 25 meters, 28 once you max out the skill. Why does this matter? Well, this opens up a lot of different gear options for us, both in solo play and in group play, because the sustained is so much better. So if you look at this ability, uh, it gives you magic back every one second when damaging them. That's very, very important because damaging them doesn't mean elemental effects. Previously, if you were using dual wield as a Templar, your sustain would take a big hit because elemental drain, you had to hit them with elemental attacks like a fire staff, a lightning staff. Now, not so much. So when you're weaving attacks with your dual wield, you're getting just, about, uh, just the same amount of magic back as someone else would be. So if you see this ability, applies the debuff, look how far away that is, and it's AoE. So you hit it, see, and guess what? Puncturing sweeps is 1.1 seconds. So that right there tells you, you really need to be disciplined in your rotation and that's light attack weaving in between your skills. See that? So Radiant Aura, huge, huge change. Healers are gonna be doing that and I'll be running my, uh, updating my battery build, but really you need to understand this is a game changer which allows for a lot more sustained options uh, gear set wise. Okay, Beam also took a hit. So rating oppression, higher damage ability, um, and you're gonna wanna basically stop, start using this around 33%. You're gonna maintain a couple dots. So pretty much reflective light until it gets below about 30. At blockade pretty much the entire duration in Blazing Spear uh, till about 10% of the health. Now, if you're doing a dungeon and the mob has 30,000 health left, just beam it. If you're doing hard mode Rakat and you know 10% is a millions of hit points, that's a little different. So make sure you're, you're, you're being disciplined and you're maintaining your dots. If you forget, priority be blockade, blazing spear, and then reflective light isn't as much as a priority later on. So beam is still worth using. Um, when you play solo, I like the other morph, Radiant Glory. So for VMA, just the healing is fantastic. When you're playing in a group, you need you have a dedicated healer, dungeons, trials, DSA, whatever. You really need to take this skill because it just the damage is spectacular in comparison. So sustained is a lot better. Number one, um, number two. You have Blazing Spear got to change. Now it doesn't stun, which, you know, kind of changes for PvP. That kind of sucks. But what it does do is last two more seconds, two seconds longer. So already this was a decent single target skill to throw down and lay there. But now that it's eight seconds, it makes it really easy to peer with Elemental Blockade. Because that's what? It's eight seconds too. So when you're going to your back bar, a more complex rotation is going to reward you with more damage. And you want to have as many damage over time effects that outproduce your main spammable as possible. That's how you get big DPS. These two things are in conjunction. Blazing Spear from your Adric Spear skill line. Elemental Blockade. And I like to cast them Blockade first, then Spear Bar Swap. So if you're real tricky with it, you can do this and block. See how you cancel that animation? So you would block, throw your Spear, Bar Swap. Those two things would line up pretty much simultaneously. So when you go back after eight seconds, you cast them together. It's a really easy rotation. If you want a, a easier rotation, you would put dual wield on your back with beam and then blockade in your front bar with Destro staff. Nice bug. That's, that's a good bug. I like that one. But for now, you really want to focus on improving your DPS by getting these two uh, dots back here. 
So a couple different things on the back bar. We're going to use the destruction staff primarily for Destralty blockade. Um, since sustain isn't going to be as a problem with dual build, we're going to take advantage of that up front. Um, Radiant Aura, Reflective Light, so that's 6.5 seconds. AoE does a lot of damage. People like Vampire's Blame, but it doesn't do any more damage than Reflective Light, and it goes faster. So it makes sense to use this because almost every single fight in the game is, well, AoE. I mean, a couple of fights, you know, Serpent, if you want to crank out your DPS and look cool and make it easier, running Vampire's Bane, great. But really, you need to make sure this is your priority if you're going to do big boy trials and, and group dungeons. And if we're talking about Ultra DPS, you're going to have um, Rearming Trap on a slot. So you put it on the front. Um, it's just a little advantage because you get more weapon damage. So technically, your dual wheel attacks will hit a little harder. That's why you put it on the front. For newer players, though, you could always put it on the back and get Harness Magic on your front, which would be the good defensive. So once you become more familiar with it, once you become better at the rotation and surviving, then you really want to have the optimal DPS rearming trap up front. So this is basically about 12 to 14 seconds. It takes a second to rearm. Uh, and it procs minor force. That's why we're using it. The physical damage so much isn't the, the big reason we're using this. We're using this to do more crit hit damage. So it's worth running um, for most players that want really high DPS. If you're a new player and you're, you're maintaining these dots and it's a little bit harder and you're on consoles and you can't see the all, all the animations, this would be the one thing that I would drop if, if you're struggling to maintain all those dots. Back bar here, channel focus for sustain. Um, you can flex this in or out for, let's say, Harness Magic on your back bar for protection or another skill if you like. Um, really, it gives you the resistance, but amazing sustain for the cost. So sustain on Magpar went from really bad to really, really fantastic. So it's a, it's a great change. Well, retribution, um, single target, this is not worth running. AoE it is. So it's a big radius, 12 meters, duration 12 seconds. It's like AoE magic caltrops. And it, you combine this with one blazing spear, blockade of fire, stuff's going to die. Remember that Blazing Spear is a great single target ability now and a great spammable. So this is your number one AoE spammable because of the radius. It's 8 meters, right? So if you spam this like this, and you can block cancel it too to even go faster. Do you know how my guy like does that? That's a little advanced. I might do a video on block canceling. Leave me a comment if you want that. And then uh, Spear is only in front of you, right? So when you're doing DPS... And, and you're honestly trying to get as much DPS as you can, you have to constantly tell yourself, am I going to hit as many enemies as possible? So if there's a bunch of mobs here, you would put Ritual down, you would do this, and if there's like three, you know, you could do a Reflective Light, and then you would simply Spear Spam. And let's say a mob dies over here, and now there's only two in front of you. Okay, well now it makes sense to do sweeps. It's very basic stuff, but the best players in the game are always trying to think, can I hit an extra mob with this skill? Because that's what ramps up your DPS, right? Okay, so uh, ultimates, Fiery Rage, No Brainer, and AoE. Now, pound for pound, if you're talking absolute most damage single target, Shooting Star will outperform it based on its ultimate cost, ultimate return, damage over time, if they're stationary, sitting there. So, like, if you're going to do a parse on a dummy, Shooting Star is the way to go. It gives you an empower so you can you hit your Reflective Light right after casting it and give that nice little boost. Um, but typically, you're going to use Fiery Rage in, like, most of the trials when the ads come out. Timing it will reward you with massive, massive damage. Ritual of Ret, Elemental Blockade, Blazing Spear, Fiery Rage. Woo Templar is still beast, I'm telling you people. So, determining on where you want to use your ultimates, both are really good for different applications. Fire Rage, most likely in almost all the trials except certain bosses, this is going to reward you with more damage. Um, another thing is Purifying Light. Now, this is good, but it's not great. So, it does damage up time. Maximum copy damage is 25,000. The reason it's not great is it can't crit and it's not AoE. So, in solo play... Uh, it, it is worth maintaining 25,000 damage with a single instant cast at 1200 magic looks really juicy, right? Well, it, it is, but when you get in trials and it's all about amplifying your crit with Warhorn, 
Trap Beast, and those things are still worth running even though there's less crit hit damage. This doesn't get amplified that much because it's based on your max magic. So yes, 10% max magic on Warhorn's great, but all your other skills are getting what? They're getting more crit hit damage. So they're way more worth running, and then most of them are AoE. Blockade, AoE. Blazing Spear, AoE. Ritual of Rut, AoE. So if you want to pump up your DPS single target, you know, this is worth running technically, but in almost all the applications, you're not going to see it as an advantage unless you, you just want to get your training dummy parse super high. So note on that. Now, some people might use it effectively and prove me wrong. Hey, if it works for you, it works for you. But this is a pretty simple rotation, and you can get about 32,000 single target DPS self-buffed. So in trials, it's going to be a lot more, especially if there's AoE ads. So we're going to go over the rotation in the back end, um, but understand that fire is your friend. And when I said I, I took a while to explain uh, sustained, and that opens up so many new gear slots for us. So the new gear best in slot. Now I don't have gold. I don't even have a gold moon dancer during. Look at that. Look at that little pug Deltia. You know, we're going with moon dancer over infal now, primarily because the two piece. Um, Max Magic is more beneficial for us, especially as a Magpar. Uh, a lot of our abilities scale off of Max Magic. Uh, hit harder and crit isn't as valuable before, so Moon Dancer. Now, Moon Dancer swords technically are the best. If you have two Moon, Dancing, Moon Dancer sharpened swords, you are probably 0.00001% of people on planet Earth. Great. Most people are not going to be able to have that, so Willpower is a great substitute. Moon Dancer comes in uh, the new trial that uh, Mob Lorkash, but you can cheese this gear. So when I say cheese it, basically what you're doing is you're looking for the leaderboards, right? You go here. Look, it's Dragon Star Arena this week, so you don't even have to do Vet Mob Lorkash to get this gear. Now I know that sounds cheesy, whatever, but if you're trying just to get that gear, just run your tunes through the the weekly as best you can. And, and see if you can get that. So Mob Lorkash here, you get the point. Try to see what the weeklies are. Get on the board so you can get rewards because it's based on those new gear pieces, not based on DSA gear. So that should be fixed, but hey, take advantage of it while it's there. Strum back bar, why? The, the extra uh, damage uh, from the wall of element buff there, and you're gonna be weaving attacks. I'll show you that in the rotation. No brainer. You don't have one, just make a crafted one, it's still fine. If you don't have willpower swords, these come from Imperial City. You can also do the dungeon finder to get these. Uh, a lot of people have been telling me that in comments. If you don't have these, just craft two Torx pack swords. Um, they give you uh, spell power or vicious death. Not nearly as good, but, you know, something. In spell wave, City of Ash 1 or 2. If you're looking for just the body pieces, just run normal and just blow through it. You can solo it easily. So if you're going for divines pieces, just, just do that. It's really easy stuff to get a hold of. Let's say you don't have this. Well, you can craft Julianos. Twice Born Star took a hit. And I'm sorry I didn't know that all this crit hit damage thing would happen. So when I told you to use Twice Born Star, I couldn't see in the future. And Twice Born Star took a hit a big time in trials just because of the crit hit damage and the way it scales. So Julianos probably better than Twice Born Star now. If you still have Twice Born Star and you don't want to spend the time to get new stuff or get Burning Spellway, you can still use it and still be effective. But Burning Spellway, five piece, all divines is your best bet. Rothdar, um, everything's enchanted max magic. You want a heavy helm, medium shoulders, get that 511 max magic, and you see them at uh, 45,000 max magic. So people focus on spell damage a little bit too much, and obviously I'm not getting buffed yet, but uh, you want really a lot of magic magic and so with those willpower swords i'm getting a lot now with moon dancer and burning <laughs> and uh burning spell weave proc you're gonna be at a lot of spell damage so either way you go it's really good rothar is still really good um even though it's not critting it, it still just does a lot of damage remember it's just a massive amount of aoe remember that when you're using this you need to be close in the area so if you're sitting back there casting you're playing this as a melee caster. This is not a Sork. If you want a range caster, play a Sork. This build, this class shines in melee range. So Grothar, 
that is another reason. Um, you can use Valkyrie Scoria. It's not going to be nearly as effective, but if you want the extra max, max health, um, you want to play it a little more safe, you can use that. There's a bunch of different options. You can use two one pieces. New players that are running out of magic, use the shadow set and uh, the other chokethorn. You can get two pieces of max uh, magic recovery and run a lot more spells if you're a newer player struggling with resources. But this is pretty much best in the slot besides Moon Dancer. Champion points real quick, we're at 600, so no brainer, 100 in Magician, 100 into Arcanist, moving over here, 100 in Elemental Expert, 7 into Spell Erosion, you can see Elfborn doesn't get nearly the love it used to, 18, um, and then we come over here, 75, that's a critical number to get to on Thaumaturge, why? Exploiter, so Blazing Spear, when you stun a mob, you're going to generate more damage against them. So an AOE, then Blazing Spears, if you recast them while the mob stun, big, 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 big damage boost. Off balance means stun mobs. So that's why we put 75 into Thaumaturge, and most of our abilities are channeled damage over time. Sweeps, Reflective Light, uh, Blockade, Spear, Ritual of Ret. So it's, it's a no-brainer to pump that up. Coming over here, you go real high into Elemental Fender and Hardy, 11 into thick, thick Skinned. 10 in Quick Recovery, and then 1 into Expert Defender. So that's the 600 CP setup. If you're new starting out, focus on Elemental Expert first because your priority as a new player is to get the passive, the 120-point passive, into Arcane Well. That's really, really important. So I would say focus on this tree until you get that. That's really going to help your sustained. All right, shut up, Deltia. Let's learn how to play this damn thing. All right, all right, I'll shut up. So, got 32,000 DPS on the parse. Uh, made a few mistakes, you know, I ain't perfect. But let me show you how kind of to start this thing out. Now, starting out, a good start, it's key. So, I tell people, uh, Gil taught me this, and basically, enter light into a fully charge heavy. Why do we do that? The basically, I don't know why it's not showing my damage, but you can get 20, 25,000 damage off a of fully charged heavy attack because, do, 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 Might of the Guild. Gonna give us 20% uh, percent more damage to start. You're at max magic anyway, so you're activating this basically to get the Might of the Guild and start out with a big, huge heavy attack. So you can put your channel focus down, start generating resources, hit this, and boom you're closing the gap while you're doing that as soon as that rips off you're basically going to do a block canceled elemental blockade your eight second dot your second thing you're going to do is a blazing spear and immediately bar swap so immediately bar swap one or two dots so that's the long animation you can block cancel it to get more damage a lot more fast a lot more fast i said that wrong boop boop now you're on your front bar you're going to light attack constantly in between, reflective light. You're getting those two fire attacks going so you can keep up your uptime with burning spell waves. See my hands low in orange? Those fire attacks are really important to maintain that. And then trap beast. So once these things are down, then you go into rotation mode. So for like a, an example of what this would look like fast, I'm going to use a spell power potion for instance. So let's just do it and shut up here and see if you can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to use an ultimate to start, Do block cancel, I screwed it up, trap beast, and you see I'm attacking every time. So my dot on my right hand side is going down to one second, so I'm going to bar swap, block cancel, and do. Do a reflective light, I should have done reflective light early, I made a mistake there, that's okay. And block cancel, spear, and reflective light. This is it. See? So, resources are dipping. Why are they dipping? I'm not running Radiant Aura and I'm not running Channel Focus. So, uh, in trials, you're going to need to run both of those. Because remember, you're rewarded for more damage the more magic you have at the end. Okay? So, that's the rotation. Real simple. One and two on your back bar. One and two on your front bar. Remember, newer players, drop rearming trap. Put harness magic on your front bar for protection. Uh, familiar players... Rearming Trap is going to reward you with more damage over time. Ritual of Ret, 
not worth maintaining in a single target, though you can put uh, Purifying Life, you just want to pump your damage up big time. So that's the update to the build. A uh, quick couple things. Number one, I wouldn't be a vampire on this build. Uh, I do it for PvP reasons, so as soon as I'm done here, I'm going to respec it and work on my magic PvP build. That's why I do it. Uh, Thief Mundestone, all Divine's traits. You can get that, that spell crit up as much as you, as much as you can, because on a Magpar, it's pretty low. So that's what you want to do. Max health, max magic food. That's a no-brainer. All attributes into here. And how did I get this custom title? Keep guessing. Keep guessing. Now, leveling this class, super simple. You need to put three abilities from the skill line on your bar. Bluncturing sweeps, reflective light, and breath to start. Boom. You're, those are almost your best skills <laughs> at the very beginning of the game. Then you get to pick up a destruction staff. You pick up, uh, you can do force pulse just to get something in it, but I just wait like two levels, put blockade on there. And then I would get like a resto staff or dual wield. And then you're just going to buy a dual wield skill and you're going to put it in your bar. People are like, why do you do that? Well, to level up the skill line. Why? So when you get to end game, you can get more damage and you don't have to go sit and grind when you're level 50. So recap, three abilities from your class skill lines, one ability from destruction staff, you're going to use a destruction staff, and then one ability from dual wield because you get XP based on the skills on your bar, not if you're using it. And then the ultimate you're going to want to use is the class skill line. You're going to want to level up the fastest. So in my opinion, early on, getting Repentance or Radiant Aura is really good. So you can go here. If you want to work on getting Beam right away, you want to go here. If you want to get this nice Burning Light passive that adds a lot of damage, you're going to want to go here. And it's just really simple to level up like that. And then once you get like Light Armor up, you get Harness Magic, you level up, you get it morphed. I would also do 5 one, one. Um, so you can level up heavy and medium armor. Why am I going to level up heavy and medium armor? Well, even these two things here still give you advantage, these three things. So at the very end game, you're going to try to get every single advantage you can. So 300 armor, why not? Medium armor. More stamina recovery, 4%. Okay. Uh, reduced stamina abilities. Well, I am using Trap Beast. So you see what I'm trying to say? There is an advantage to doing it. Is it monster? No. But every advantage counts. Dumber will reward you with most damage possible, I'm pretty sure. Um, but High Elf is a, a good safe bet for a lot of players. So Dumber is great. I like it in PvP because I have the max stam uh, and the resistance to fire. Though Argonian is still my favorite race for just being tanky. And then make sure you're going to get your medicinal use passive. That's really, really important. So you're using the spell power potions because you don't have entropy on your bar. You're getting that, that benefit. Um, 47 seconds when potions last 45 so basically you're having 100 percent uptime on your sorcery buff especially important solo if no one's running molten wep uh, weapons or anything so that's the bill i'm sorry i took forever to go over this but uh templar sustain is a lot better the old vma build with um withered hand is still really good for just farming gear and making sure you don't die uh, but if you want like ultra high scores, ultra high damage, switch to this. And then what you're going to do is make sure you have radiant aura on, uh, basically I would do my back bar and you're going to cast it when the portals are spawning. So I would take that off. I'd put harness here, run this exact setup and the amount of damage you're going to do is disgusting. So that's for advanced players though. So starting off, use this. Learn the rotation, learn the buffs, and it's really making sure you're maintaining those buffs and sweeping. If you're sweeping more than three times, you're not doing it right. There should be a buff or some uh, damage over time effect you should be applying. So don't just sit there and mindlessly sweep. Apply them buffs. They will reward you with a lot more damage over time than just mindlessly sweeping. Believe me, I've been a mindless sweeper before. I'll be working on the Stamina Templar build video next, and then I will be working on the uh, Magic Templar PvP build. So hopefully I'll get those things out. Sorry it's taking me forever. I got caught up after visiting old Zoss Sauce. But I'm excited to be back in the game. Look at Nugget Nation HQ, baby. We're, we're starting to build it up. We're starting to build up. Thanks for all your support. I appreciate everything you guys have done for me, and we'll see you next time.